to STEAM at the Museum, meet our baby dinos. We're so excited that you can join us here in our exhibition, Dinosaurs, the Age of Big Weird Feathered Things. The museum is located in downtown Kitchener in southwestern Ontario, and this land has been home to indigenous people for thousands of years. For the museum's area, those people are the Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and neutral people. As settlers, we are super grateful for the opportunity to live, work, and play on this land. The museum is also situated on the Haldeman Tract, which is an area promised to the Six Nations that includes uh, six miles on either side of the Grand River. And if you don't know, the Grand River is a massive waterway that runs from north of our area all the way down to Lake Erie. Now, I can tell you a little bit about the museum and the land that we're on, but I don't know where you're tuning in from, and what I just said may be different for you. I highly recommend you check out online resources like native-land.ca to learn more about the land that you live on. Today, we're going to be introducing you to our newest additions, our baby dinosaurs. We've got two brand new special friends and we'd love for you to learn more about them. We're gonna talk a little bit about our baby dinosaurs' early lives, their diets, and how big they could get as adults. We're gonna wrap up with a little art activity for you to think a bit more about where baby dinosaurs come from, eggs. Before we dive in, I wanna tell you about a fun naming competition we're running. We weren't super sure what to call our baby dinosaurs, and we figured the best option was to ask you guys what you thought would be fun. So, if you check out the website in the description, you can learn a little bit more about how you can vote to decide on the names of our two baby dinosaurs. Voting closes on July 14th, so be sure to act fast. And once the voting closes, you'll get to find out what the names are by checking that link below. This is the first of our two new dino friends. Do you know what this little fella is? This is a baby Parasaurolophus. Aren't they cute? They're very, very cute. This little buddy lived in the Cretaceous period, which is the third period in the Mesozoic era. The other two periods were the Triassic and the Jurassic. The thing that stands out most about the Parasaurolophus is its long bony crest. Do you want to turn your head so they can see your head, see your crest? Isn't that a really big crest? Good job. There are lots of ideas about what this crest may have been used for. Two of the main hypotheses is that it may have been used to help the Parasaurolophus communicate. So the bony crest is actually hollow and full of lots of different tubes. And paleontologists think it may have been a kind of resonance chamber that would help the Parasaurolophus's calls go louder and get a little further away from them. So possibly the Parasaurolophus crest was used for communication. Another idea is that the crest may have helped Parasaurolophus control its body temperature. Parasaurolophus could get around in one of two ways. They probably spent a lot of time wandering around on all fours, munching on whatever they found. But if there was trouble, they could hop up onto two legs and run on their back legs to escape from predators. The young Parasaurolophus were probably even more nimble than adults and probably a little speedy. The youngest Parasaurolophus ever found was about one years old. One year old. How big do you think a one year old Parasaurolophus might be? I'll let you think about that for a second. The one year old fossil was over eight feet long. That's a quarter of its adult size. This baby I've got here is quite a bit smaller than eight feet. I don't think I can carry eight feet and definitely under a year old. Knowing that a dinosaur could go from a tiny egg hatchling up to eight feet within a year tells us that it grew really quickly. And this little buddy probably is a couple months old. Parasaurolophus dinosaurs were hadrosaurs, or duckbill dinosaurs. They were like this myosaur down here. You can see from the skull, it's got a toothless duck bill at the front and teeth at the back. Do you want to open your mouth so they can see your little your empty, no teeth? They've got no teeth at the front like this, like the myosaur. But the teeth at the back were stacked in things called batteries, where it was multiple rows of teeth on top of each other. As the active teeth were worn down by chewing, newer teeth grew up to replace them. Parasaurolophus teeth were long, but wide and thin, a little bit like our incisors. Those are the teeth at the front of our mouth. They were pretty good at breaking up plant material. Paleontologists can get an idea of what an extinct animal ate based on both its teeth and its skull. 
and paleontologists who study Parasaurolophus skulls have learned that it's kind of But without fossil evidence, it's hard to say whether Parasaurolophus were good parents or not. This baby dinosaur is another very popular one. Do you know what it's called? Want to take a guess? This is a Tyrannosaurus rex. These dinosaurs roamed Western North America during the Cretaceous period, just like the Parasaurolophus but they lived between 83.6 and 66 million years ago. Next to me is a thigh bone replica of a full grown T-Rex. It's called a femur bone for comparison. As you can see, this little buddy has quite a lot of growing to do. They're probably around maybe two years old and it's still fairly young for a Tyrannosaurus Rex. The fossil records show that Tyrannosaurus Rex may have lived up to 30 years. Even still, our little friend is bigger than when they first hatched. Baby T-Rexes were probably about the size of a Chihuahua when they first came out. The first 10 years of a T-Rex's life would have been really slow growing. By about five years, they would have been about human shoulder height, and at about 10 years, they would have been slightly taller than a person. But between 12 and 20 years, Paleontologists think that they would have hit a growth spurt as, their teen, as a teenager and really shot up to become the towering giants we're all familiar with. You gonna grow a lot, buddy? Yeah? Tyrannosaurus rex teeth tell us one pretty important thing. They ate meat. Can you show us your teeth, buddy? We can tell by their pointy triangle-shaped teeth. I've got a model of a T-Rex tooth fossil. This part at the end is where the tooth would have stuck out of the mouth, and this part up here is the root of the tooth. They've got pretty deep roots. We can see that the tooth is pointy, and if you look very carefully, you can see that the edge has a bit of a serration. That means it's jaggedy, and this made it even better for cutting through meat and flesh. Another neat thing to know about adult T-Rex teeth is that they may be sharp and pointy, but they're kind of round too. I have another fossil tooth replica from another species. This giant predator would have lived in South America and is slightly bigger than a T-Rex and would have eaten meat as well. From the side, these two teeth are almost hard to tell apart, but if you look at them front on, we can see that there is a bit of a difference in their width. One tooth is narrow and a bit more like a knife, but the T-Rex tooth is wide. Why do you think that a T-Rex had thick teeth? Adult T-Rexes had massive heads, even for dinosaurs. And that massive head meant massive muscles, and those muscles meant one powerful bite. Paleontologists think that T-Rex adults could deal lethal, bone-crushing damage to their prey, and it had thicker teeth to deal with the forces of a bite so strong that it couldn't just cut through flesh, but crush bone. Because T-Rexes may have spent such a long time growing to their full size, especially during their first 10 years, they may have sampled all sorts of prey during their lives as they grew in and out of ecological niches. As massive full-grown adults, like this one here, a T-Rex would have hunted the Cretaceous giants like Hadrosaurs, duckbill dinosaurs, Ankylosaurs, and Ceratopsians, which are things like Triceratops and other dinosaurs that had horns on their faces. T-Rex adults had 
thick, bone-crushing teeth to prove that they could deal damage. But as juveniles, adolescents, or babies, their teeth were different and so was their diet. Juveniles would have had like miniature steak knives in their mouths for snagging much smaller prey. And although there were lots of smaller dinosaurs around at the same time as Tyrannosaurus rex, like Oviraptors, Ornithomimids, and Pachycephalosaurs, these fast, nimble dinosaurs probably didn't have to worry about the big T-Rexes, but had to keep an eye out for the juveniles. Young T-Rexes were leggy, lightly built, and probably very fast, able to catch agile prey. Now it's time for us to size up our two baby dinosaurs as adults. I'm gonna use these one foot markers to help us get a sense of how big these dinosaurs could be when they were full grown. We're gonna head on down to the atrium where we've got lots of space to measure this out. Come on. So we're down in our atrium where we've got space to measure out. We're gonna start off with our Parasaurolophus. When they were full grown and standing on all four feet, they could get to be 10 feet tall and 31 feet long from nose to tail. So we're gonna measure those two out. We'll start off with the height of 10 feet. We'll start in this corner over here. And I've got some fun yellow feet for us to measure out 10 feet tall. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. That's ten feet. Next, we'll measure out the length. And from nose to tail, Parasaurolophus was 31 feet long when it was fully grown. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So our Parasaurolophus could grow to be 31 feet long and 10 feet tall, even when it was standing on all fours. As a full-grown full dinosaur, its head, including that long, bony crest, could be 5 feet long, which is a really big head. Next, we're going to move on to our Tyrannosaurus rex. Now, our Tyrannosaurus rex could grow to be 17 feet tall and 40 feet long. We're going to use some orange feet to measure the height of a T-Rex. And we'll start right next to the Parasaurolophus. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. So a Tyrannosaurus rex adult could be 17 feet tall. Now let's measure out the length. And I'm going to use these pink feet to measure out the length of my Tyrannosaurus rex, which was 40 feet. So let's, tr let's get started. I'm going to put that just on the outside here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. Thirty, 
39 and 40. Wow. So here we've got in the orange feet our Tyrannosaurus's height when it was full grown of 17 feet. And as an adult, full length, nose to tail, 40 long feet. Whew, wow. These babies are super cute and probably really manageable, but I don't know if they would be great pets as an adult. They're kind of big. Now, in general, there isn't a whole lot known about baby dinosaurs. Why do you think that is? I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. Well, one reason is that dinosaur fossils are rare to begin with. Paleontologists, the scientists who study and dig up fossils, have to travel far and wide and dig in kind of unforgiving environments and still may not find anything. So if fossils are hard to come by, then fossils of baby dinosaurs are even rarer. The babies are smaller, they're more fragile with soft, quickly growing bone, and were probably food for something bigger. And these are all things that get in the way of a baby dinosaur when it dies fossilizing. We know that dinosaurs all laid eggs. But there is a bit of debate about whether or not dinosaurs laid hard-shelled eggs like birds and alligators, or soft-shelled eggs like lizards and snakes. The answer seems to be both. Some dinosaurs, like theropods and our Parasaurolophus, would have laid hard-shelled eggs. But other dinosaurs may have laid soft-shelled eggs that were leathery and tore when, they were, when, the, when the babies were emerging rather than cracked. But just like how baby dinosaurs are hard to come by because their bones are a little softer, soft-shelled foss soft egg fossils are extremely rare. They just don't preserve well in the fossil record. All right, so now let's think a little bit more about eggs and we're going to use our craft to give us a hand. So I have a coloring sheet and a bit of a cutout craft that we can do together. And this is, I've decided I'm going to do a baby T-Rex, but you'll also find a baby T-Rex as the handouts that you can find in the description for this video. So I'm gonna walk you through how we're gonna do this. I'm gonna start actually by coloring my baby T-Rex. So I've got some pencil crayons here. I'm gonna pick a couple colors. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be really bright and vibrant with my colors. Now, you can see that my baby T-Rex has a bit of fuzz. And that's because paleontologists are quite sure that baby T-Rexes would have hatched with a lot of feather on them, a lot of feathers on them, probably fluffy like down. And so I'm gonna cover, I'm gonna color my baby T-Rex and their fluffy feathers. And you may have noticed that our T-Rex baby also had feathers on their back. So I'm just gonna, I decided I'm gonna pick an orange for my feathers and I'm just gonna color it in and I would suggest that you color it in before you cut it out, and that way if you color out of the lines, it's not that big of a deal, um, at least for the egg part. So I'm just gonna color in my feathers. I've got yellow, orangey feathers. I'm gonna go with like um, a little bit more of a yellowy color. A bit of yellow. Now, like I said, when baby dinosaurs, when baby T-Rexes hatched, they would have been pretty small and would have spent a long time slowly growing to be the size they are of the T-Rex baby that we've got with us now. So T-Rexes would have been slow growers the tar at the start and would have had a growth spurt. All right, so I've got my orangeiness stuff on my chest and neck and then yellow feathers for the back. I'm gonna add a bit of brown to make some stripes. That's red. Um, I'm gonna use, ah, I'll use green. All right, so I'm gonna give it some stripes. Nothing fancy, just some little stripes going down the back. And the nice thing about knowing that you're coloring something fluffy is that you don't have, you can kind of be a little zigzaggy, you can be a bit messy when you're coloring in. You don't have to be super straight and be going in one direction if you want it to look like fluff. All right, so I've got my baby dinosaur feathers are colored. I'm going to pick a color for its, um, its face. We are going to go with a, I'm gonna go with gray. I'm gonna go with a gray face. I'll color in the bare face on its 
the bear's skin on its face. Now we've got our dinosaur has its feathers and its face. I'm going to pick the color for its eyes. I think I would like green eyes. So I'll pick a nice green color. I've got a light green and a dark green, so I'm going to add both of those to this. So we'll color it in with a nice light green. And I'll go over it again with a darker green, maybe for like the people. Get a nice dark green. All right, so that's my dinosaur. And now I have to decide on what color I'm gonna paint. I'm gonna color my egg. And uh, I'm gonna pick uh, blue. I think I'm gonna go with a blue egg. All right, and this is the part, or actually this is a bit of purple. Yeah, I'm gonna go with purple instead. So this is the part where you don't have to worry about getting outside the lines, because we're gonna cut this out. So I'm just gonna color in a nice purple egg. So I've got my bottom part of my egg, and this is where my baby dinosaur is sitting. I'll just color that. Now, I have, if you look on, actually this is really nice that I've got, I'm using the light table, because if you hold up your paper, you'll see that you can see the outline of the top part of the egg through the page. So I'm going to flip my page over, and I'm going to color purple so that when I cut out my, my little little art activity, um, the, this part here is going to show when I fold it over. So I'll color that in now. I'll just color in some purple here. And if I go, out, go outside the lines, it really doesn't matter. I'm going to cut it out anyway. Purple. I'm running out. All right, so I've still got some, still have a bit of pencil, but I'm running, running a bit low. Oh, yeah, there we go. All right, so I've got my purple, my new purple. Nice big strokes there. All right, so now I'm going to flip it over, and I've got my the bottom of my egg here. I've got the inside of my egg, which I'm going to maybe color in a paler color. Let's see if I've got some lighter that I can use. Oh, I think I've got a gray. Nope, green. All right, we'll go with purple, and I'll just go really, really light, barely pressing at all. Now, you don't have to color the inside of the egg. You can leave it white if you'd like to. go over it with a white pencil crayon so it's that kind of gives it a bit of a lighter color or evens it out smooths it out so the inside of your egg probably isn't going to be as brightly colored as the outside but if you want to make it brightly colored baby can be having a colorful party inside of its egg before it hatches you can do whatever you'd like Alrighty. Okay, so I have colored in my dinosaur egg. Um, I'm not going to bother with this inner part here just because with the purple on the outside, it's pretty already kind of purplish. Now we're going to get to the part where we cut. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. So I've made the lines here pretty thick. So you're going to just cut all these, this outer line for the egg. And there's a bit in here that doesn't have a line. You're not going to cut this part. You're going to leave that there because we're going to fold here. So I'm going to do my cutting now along the outside and you've got a nice thick line to work with so if you cut into it or cut a little bit cut a little bit too much you probably are going to be fine still all right and 
when you get to this part, you may you be really careful and a bit slow because I don't want to cut through it. So I'm going to turn my paper around and change directions with my scissors. There we go. So that way I'm not cutting through that part that doesn't have a line in it. Just cut this off. I'm going to put that aside. Um, and I'm going to cut all the way around and then deal with this little bit here just to make it a, a little easier for me. So I'm going to get rid of this, this side here. And again, as I get right to that part where I'm going to fold, I'm just going to slow right down and then turn my page around and cut this way. There we go. here now. The last little bit is I just want to cut this stuff out so it looks a bit like a cracked egg. Because T-Rexes would have had hard shell eggs. And you may need to go nice and slow. You can see how I'm slowing right down as I'm getting to the corners. And we keep it nice and neat. To a straight part, I can go a little faster, then I get to a corner and slow down again and take my time. And last little bit, and there. Okay, so now we've cut that stuff off. And now it is time to fold. So we've got our little piece here that we haven't cut through, and we're going to fold it over just at that spot until we have, until it covers up where the baby dinosaur was. nice neat fold. There we go. So we have our little dinosaur in an egg, or we have an egg, and then if we flip it up, we've got a baby dinosaur that's just hatched. So that's a little art project that you guys can try at home. Um, excuse me, can I have my art back, please? What? But it's, it's mine. Can I have it back? Please. Oh. Can I have it back, please? Thank you. Well, I hope you had a good time, and I hope that you learned some things about baby dinosaurs. These little ones are probably going to be a bit of a handful, but we hope that you can join us soon and get a chance to meet them. Thanks for joining us. Bye!
if you stay out of the background. Is there anything you're specifically looking for? No, just the spell. When I'm talking about it being like it's a massive spell with massive bones and massive muscles, that's kind of what I want. 